Buzz versus Malamar as well, starting off the weekend and showing us that Europe is ready to knock Buzzwell out of the top spot. Well, so I think they're just getting set set up now. Um, so uh, let's slide on over. Yeah, let's just go see what what we've got in hand. Slide up because it will be an interesting format because it's largely rock paper scissors. Mm -hmm. People think in that you know your Manama beats your Buzz, your yeah. Buzz beats your Zoro, your Zoro beats your Manama. But at any point between that, anything could happen. Of course, I think that this weekend we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of people bringing decks that could just break the format essentially. They're going to be doing anything they can, any sort of loophole anywhere to be able to start it. And off we go, Joe and Elo shake hands and we actually see Zoro was straight down. So two decks that we mentioned straight off the bat, we'll be looking forward to seeing what Zoro White variant exactly we will be seeing. Uh, there's a fire energy in his hand, so already looking we're to seeing be pretty spicy things to we're get seeing us underway. something exciting already. Joe starting with that hyperspace punch Hooper that we mentioned earlier on. Um, being able to attach a colorless energy and doing 20 damage to two places on the board. Um, Joe, uh, Joe pulls a face of shark, seeing the fire energy come down and Nilo just passing turn. Uh, hopefully Joe is going to be going straight for the knockout. He's going to be praying that he can hit all the things that he needs in order to do so. And as you can see now, we have the picture of that Hooper. For those of you who don't know, the card released back in Steam Siege. Yeah. You said yourself, Connor, people looking through their bowl, <laughs> trying to find anything that can possibly get um, get things going and get the format moving back in a, a more balanced situation. This card is one of those examples. I think not really ever played, but Hyperspace Punch, being able to do 100 to a Buzzwell in the active with a choice band, and of course, Portal Strike. Just doing 130, not being able to attack next turn, but solidly being able to knock out Psychic Attackers and Fighting Attackers. This Hooper could actually do quite a lot of stuff this weekend. Well, so that Portal Strike, not being able to attack next turn is not too much of an issue if you're playing the Psychic Manama deck because you have the Dormings and the Crosma, you put a Float Stone on, and you just move things around. You go, hey, I don't care. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make my board. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm just gonna, yeah. um, Don't mind me. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to do what I need to do. So what we did see is, unfortunately for Nilo, it was just a attach pass, um, which is kind of odd for a Zarok deck. I didn't really see his hand. I did see at least one puzzle in there, which is not great when you have no discard pile. Not um, too great. So kind of a slightly uh, disappointing start. And, but Joe's face, um, when they flipped the cards over, I don't know if anyone caught it, but Joe immediately kind of pulled a kind of slight wince of like, oh dear, because he knows that the Zoroark matchup for uh, Malamar is actually kind of rough. And it's actually one of the big reasons why he's opted to include the Hooper. Of course. Well, we see Joe uh, get that Bridget, get down his Inkays and an Necrozma. But looking down at the prizes now, I think we can see what Nilo's playing. He is, in fact, playing that lovely Alone and Executor deck that we saw in Madison there. Uh, that's the reason we're seeing all sorts of energy come out from him, the fire energy included. Uh, so hopefully we're going to be in for an exciting game here. That Alone and Executor, 160 HP on a stage one. For one prize, it's absolutely insane, as well as being able to output for 120, 150 with a choice band. It's it's like a Galissapod, really, with a lot more work that needs to be done to get it going. Yeah, but the weird thing is, though, is whilst it has more work to get it going, you have to discard an awful lot of energy to get ever get set up. It's actually easy to s uh, sustain. Because with Galissapond, you needed Guzmas and Floatstones and ways to retreat. This, you just need to keep putting down a little executor every turn and going, yeah, but we're just going to just do it again. Just going just gonna to kick it off. And then, of course, looking over to Joe's side, actually some important cards here, Prize. He's got an Inke Prize, one of his Malamar lines, and a Dawn Wings. Hopefully, um, we don't have Joe's list in front of us right now, but hopefully he is playing the two counter Dawn Wings. Otherwise, he might be in a little bit of trouble there. Moving that Hooper out of the active, for example, as we were saying, and uh, being able to reload things. Uh, he's going to be hoping. He's uh, shaking his head as he's seen the egg hit the board. And Nilo lifts his lips in a small smile. Uh, he knows that he's come with a spicy deck this weekend. And Joe's face expresses that in a great deal. Um, however, looking at this matchup, uh, not necessarily a deck that we've seen too much from Zara. Obviously, we did see it in Madison. But... What, what do we think? Is this matchup a, a good one for Zoroark, or, or is this one that uh, Malamar actually has a chance in? Well, so the interesting thing with the Alolan Executor lists is because you play so many energy, you have a lot of space for different techs. So it honestly depends on which energy Nilo has opted for and which techs he's gone with. So we can see the Latios in the, in the prize cards, really nice against Buzz. Yes. Um, the second attack is 70 uh, for three, so for Psychic du Double Colors. And the first attack for just a straight DCE is very nice. Um, so you're in a situation where actually it's not too awkward. You get the prize trade in your favour. Um, he would have really have liked to have seen another energy this turn, so at least he could attack 
Um, I believe it's now gone back over to Joe. Um, but at least he's now starting to establish a board. You know, the two-shot war that he can get into is actually okay as well. Of course, and we see the Mars Shadow hit the board here. Uh, one of my favorite cards to actually raise up from the shadows here. A card that wasn't too played when it's at release, but now that Zoroark is a bad matchup for this Psychic deck, this Malamar that can copy this uh, Prismatic Birds from the discard, as well as uh, Dawnwings' attacks, I think it's a really cool tech here. Um, being able as well to knock out those Zoroarks for just minimal effort there, really something that's going to work in Joe's favor in this matchup, and we'll see that most probably come off. Uh, and although, the one scary thing about this is, Nilo does have one prize attackers, and that Mars Shadow does have 150 HP, which is very easy for that alone and Executor to hit. So, we might even see a one for a two prize trade here. If Nilo's able to hit a really opportune Guzma, bring out that Mars Shadow, that could actually be quite dangerous for Joe. Yeah, it, it really tilts things um, back. Um, you know, if, if Nilo is able to ever exploit the fact that Mars Shadow doesn't have that much HP. And you can tell that, I guess, Joe was probably looking to ideally attack with the Mars Shadow this turn, but had nothing in discard to do so with. Um, so we see a double puzzle for, I believe that was a choice band and a Bridget again. Yeah, um, they were the only two things in his discard. I think what he's doing, I think he's got a Sycamore in hand. I think he just wants to actually use his resources a little bit. Uh, as, although they've just gone straight back into the discard. He has discarded two Bridget there though. It's not the worst, although he has unfortunately had to use two of his puzzles very early off in the game. Uh, his Acerola also in the bin. Uh, not something he wants to see. That's one of the key cards of this deck, being able to hop that alone and executor out of the active before it actually gets damaged. And we see the Professor's Letter in this deck now. Uh, a really interesting card as it allows Nilo to get those energy in hand and be able to trade them straight into the discard. Yeah, it's actually a really nice way of basically thinning your deck of two cards with the fact that Zoroark with the trade ability basically kind of improves you a little bit because you get to get rid of bad cards and these metal energies, this fighting energy. I don't think they count as good cards right now in, in Nilo's <laughs> list because they're just there because he needs to be able to hit 120 at some point. At some point. <laughs> at some point. Uh, so, and as we see, we do see the energy hit into the discard there and Nilo's going to be hoping to hit another Zoroark this turn and he, he does. does. So he is going to be able to get two energy in the discard this turn. Uh, moving forward now a little bit, he had a bit of a uh, stagnant start, but uh, I think we see another Zoroark in hand <laughs> as well. Uh, really pulling back into this game if he does have it. Another Professor's Letter. If he does have the third Zoroark, I think I can see it in his hand. We are going to see a total of three energy hit the discard at minimum this turn. But the really crazy thing with this as well is he's basically massively thinned his deck. You know, with, between the Sycamore for seven, he's traded for a total of six cards by the end of this, but he's also used two Professor's Letters. So he's gone through like 15, 16 cards in a single turn. This is what Zoroark is all about, of making sure you get through your resources so that you always have exactly what you want when you want it. Of course, I mean, uh, that trade ability becomes even more substantial for the deck when you're able to draw into what you want. We do see the Zoroark come down. I imagine we'll be seeing that Psychic Energy hit the discard and two more cards being drawn. Uh, Nilo really uh, smartly grabbed the Grass Energy as well. He has two options here. You can either go for the Zoroark, uh, get a bench Pokemon down and do 120 to that Hooper, or alternatively, he can attach that Grass straight down to that Execute put that alone executor down that he's got in his hand and start doing his damage. So I think what he's probably thinking about here is he, I think he's in a position where he probably wants to get down a second egg. Of because course, yeah. currently, looking at Joe's side of the board, yes, okay, he has the, the Necrozma ready to go, but he's actually not taking a one shot on anything right now, and because you have to discard all the energy, you only ever really want to use it if you're getting the, the one hit KO. Um, so Joe's main option here would have just been, well, just deny the egg. Um, Deny the egg. You know, just make sure he can never put this down and tilt the prize trade against us. Because eventually the Marshadow becomes live. And as soon as the Marshadow is live, it becomes much better for Joe. Yeah, of course. I mean, in Nico's hand, I can see two alone executors, one of them just popping down now. So as long as that egg doesn't get pulled out this turn, I don't imagine that Joe uh, will want to um, attack an egg <laughs> and execute with his uh, Necrozma next turn. So we do just see the 120 damage come down from Zoroark. Uh, I think we might see uh, some damage put down on uh, Zoroark GX from the Necrozma. However, the one thing to keep in mind is Zoroark has Psychic Resistance. Mm -hmm. Therefore meaning that that Necrozma does need four Psychic Energy on it in order to take a knockout this turn. Also, I believe that was exactly what happened with Joe last turn, is that he powered up the Necrozma and he was trying to wait up, hey, do I just go in and start setting this up um, this is always fun at uh, this level of competition as well Joe they're just reading out going how much HP <laughs> um, it's a very it, like you know even at regional level and like a high level play sometimes there is some playing a card you're like 
but but seriously, it has 160 HP on a, a stage one. But seriously, <laughs> this is actually on the field right now. Like, like, um, um, so we do see that fourth yeah. psychic come down. Uh, Joe, in know, Joe knowing exactly what he needs to do here. It doesn't look like he's got too many options right now either. I don't think there's any more psychic in his discard. So obviously next turn opens up a little more options for him. Uh, being able to move his board around a little bit more and set up some alternate attackers. However, the one thing to keep in mind, uh, he opted to bench the Marshadow, meaning now that that Necrozma needs a float stone to get out the active because mm -hmm. he doesn't have Dawnwinds down. Uh, so we're going to see something happen from Joe on his next turn, but so it I needs to move it. His plan for the next turn um, will be something along the lines of find Guzma, uh, have energy in hand, and I, I believe he has an Ultra Ball, so he sh if he has any attackers in hand, he can just ditch it and uh, be able to set himself up of course and we do see the second there's alert two, executor down there's two so massive trees in the, in the, in the room two there's trees <laughs> just dead in the middle of the play mat uh, very inconvenient so uh, we see two eggs come down so this is actually really important from Nilo as we said early on uh, Joe needs to get these eggs out of the way really quickly because his ability to hit 160 is not easy obviously he needs to discard a lot of energy from Necrozma in order to do that um, he can't use Black Raid to start setting it up because it's not a GX or an EX uh, and he doesn't have Dormans on the field right now. Yeah, so yeah, that's 320 damage he has to deal with two prize cuts. <laughs> Insane <laughs> amount of damage yeah. and Nilo just hoping here, I think he's got 100 damage coming down. Oh no, it's, it's 150. He's got all the energy in there he needs. Uh, that's actually looking really nice for Nico. So the one thing to keep in mind here as well is... Um, Will he be playing that uh, uh, Alone Executor GX? Uh, we did see in Madison um, the player, I, I, unfortunately I can't remember his name, uh, I do apologise, but uh, he was playing the GX just to be able to snipe that damage late mm. game. For every energy attached to it, you can put down 20 damage for each energy anywhere you like on the board. Obviously by setting up that Hooper, setting up that Necrozma with a bit of damage, he might be able to do that. We've and we do see the Elixir come down, Very hit important. that Hooper. Uh, that elixir is going to be really big for Joe. He does need to keep these energies flowing onto the board. That psychic recharge now able to set up that Hooper, as well as getting energy else down somewhere else. But the problem still stands that Necrozma isn't the active, so we're hoping here to see that Joe has something in his hand to move it. Yeah, well, so the attachment to the Hooper basically means that he's really looking to set up some KOs here. He's not looking to take the, uh, the prizes now. He's very much looking probably to use the hyperspace punch. We do uh, see the, the float stone. Down. Um, you know the hyperspace punch to be able to set up a couple. You know, just get the numbers working in his favour. Um, I don't know. He looks like oh, he's going on. straight he's, in he's, for it. He uh, looks... This is this is Joe High Roll Bernard. <laughs> uh, this is this is just the way he plays. You know, he's like, right, we're going in, boys. Uh, uh, yeah, that that Hooper going straight in for it. I think he's going to do the 130 here. The one thing we got to keep in mind, though, he can do 130 here. But Nico, we've seen two Acerola already. Um, there's one in his prizes as well, mm -hmm. so it looks like there's a possibly a total count of three here. You know, 130 is just not going to cut it. Nilo able to heal these executors. He might even play a cheeky max potion in there as he's only got the one energy down. Very easy to reattach. Uh, he's also got DCEs in hand ready to attach to Zoroark. He's got plenty of options this turn. That field blow is very, very, very big. I was about to say there, um, that field blower taking away the float stones. Joe's Dawnwing still not able to hit the field. Really tough situation for him to be in. Both these eggs looking very strong, and he does it. He does go for that Marsh out of play. We mentioned very early on in the game, he's Guzman it out, and we're going to see 150 damage, knocking that two prizes for Nico, grabbing that Acerola as well, being able to lift that alert and Executor next turn. What an exciting turn. Well, so this is the thing. Guzman is one of those cards that just we see play, play all the time, right? There's basically... Basically, nothing is not playing a copy of Guzma anymore. Um, you know, switching your opponent's bench Pokemon uh, with one of the with their active and doing the same with your own. That's dual uses. Here we see it here is going. Look, I haven't damaged Executor. It's on the bench. You can't do anything to it now. It's fine. And it also nice to put up the Marshadow at the same time to keep it just safe. Like you know, the with 120 damage on the Alolan Executor on the bench, the Hooper can't do anything. It can't attack anyway. Um, but even if it could, it just can't snipe it to finish it off. It's actually a really big turn. Is yeah, of course. Four? Is that a Giratina? Yeah, as Giratina goes down, obviously we did see that start in the prizes. Not very useful in this matchup. Uh, in some of the matchups, a useful attacker and stopping Greninja Break from obviously using his ability. It does 110 and discarding the card from the top uh, from your opponent's hand, I believe. Uh, so uh, a useful attacker in some matchups. But uh, in this one, I think it is uh, definitely better off in the discard pile. Um, so 
what is Joe's uh, play here? Obviously, he's got the Hooper ready to go in the active. Uh, we do see the Muti GX also hit the bench. He has got that really powerful Psy Strike GX attack, being able to do 200 damage. <laughs> However, the thing is, 200 damage, he needs a choice band to knock out a Zorua. Mm -hmm. Well, so, so, we actually, so he's actually not benching the Mewtwo here. He's just searching it. Because um, I think he's gone, well, look, it's actually not ideal in this matchup because, uh, you know, I believe mean, it's 120 for two and uh, healing itself a little bit. Um, 60 for two. Yeah, it's 120, it's, it's yeah, 120 yeah. on the buzzwall. That's the of only course. time I've ever actually seen the math math. <laughs> uh, but it's 60 for two and healing itself a little bit. Uh, 200 on the GX. Um, so the, the problem is, is that he just doesn't get any value here. It's mostly hit to deal with lightning rocks. Um, but actually, I actually really like it as a card in this list. The big trick for Joe, though, is he needs to find a way of getting to a Dawn Wings. Because what he, if he can set a Dawn Wings up at any stage, you know, with three energy on it, the GX attack takes one prize. Of course. He can then take the, or, you know, ideally take a prize on, two prizes on the Lele would be very nice. Puts him very, you know, close to winning. Or he could just got to take the 180 straight into an Alolan Executor at some stage. To just remove it. Whatever the follow-up play is, is going to involve getting the Zoro, you know, you have to try and find ways of playing around everything. It's the thing is, though, the only thing to mention once again, uh, this matchup in Nico's favour, if he does play that alone in Executor GX, actually very important. Because if the Dawnwings does at any point come in and take those two prizes, Alone in Executor's attack could just jump straight over yep. it and hit that damaged Pokemon on the bench, being able to take those last two prizes if needed. Yep. So, Nilo actually may be set up here to actually pinch his last two prizes very nicely, and we do actually see the Hyperspace Punch just drop two damage on his Arawak and bump in that Executor right the way up to t uh, 150. Mm -hmm. So that means that next turn, the alone, first Alone in Executor goes down, but then I don't know... What what the plan will be for Joe. Like I he needs. don't think it does, because I see a lovely Acerola sitting right there in Nilo's yeah. hand. And he has the egg and he's already. got an egg as well, so he can get another egg down, have two down in the Acerola. That would be quite naughty, I must say, from Nilo. Uh, teasing Joe with these one prize attackers. Uh, really pondering in his hand, though. He does have a Sycamore as well, two DC in hand. He doesn't really know what the best play is here, and he does go for the Acerola. Uh, we mentioned right from the start, a really important card in this matchup. Uh, something that is definitely going to come in useful and Joe does pick up his cards. He looks fairly frustrated there He's put a lot of resources into getting that 150 damage down on the executor and all of it's just been wiped away in front of his eyes uh, The interesting thing here will be whether Nilo will bench the other uh, execute Just to avoid being guzmed out and just knocked out really quickly And we do see the knockout from a lonely executor at the end of the uh, turn. Might we just say tropical shake? Possibly the best named attack ever. It, it is a very good name <laughs> for an attack. Actually, like, I think look, like executors as a whole rule have had some pretty good attack names. Um, I believe the other one, Shake It Off. Uh, there's, Tower Go Round. Yeah, there's, yeah, some, there's, some, all there's of some great them. names. There is some pretty cool names popping off in the, in the pop there. Uh, we do see another Necrozma hit. So, as the game goes on, we mentioned right from the start, it's more and more increasingly showing. I think Joe is only running the one Dawn Wings. Uh, it's been sitting in the prizes. We've not seen him hit one yet. His deck is looking rather thin. Uh, obviously, if he was playing two, he probably would have used the mystery treasure right there just to grab it straight away and get it down on the board. Um, you know, probably only running the one, which is a lot. Of, it's, it's a big issue for him. Uh, probably one of his best ways to take a few more prizes in this game. Obviously, as we mentioned, the Crossman needing four energy to be able to knock out a Zoroark. Dawnwing's being able to knock out the Lele much more efficiently. Joe needs to find another way out of this. Um, of course, the rescue stretcher as well for the Mar Shadows, another way to take those prizes. But he does fall into the trap of being knocked out by a learning executor again. Yeah, so actually, something that Nilo did last turn um, that's actually become relevant is Joe uh, had the field blow this turn, which means that Joe managed to discard the choice band off the active. But in playing the Acerola, he just pick the other choice band up. So it means that like, by not playing it back down, this is the kind of like lines of play you have to think of is look, you can play around field blower this way. You just don't commit it. And that way you can never lose the choice band. Of course, yeah, um, perfectly said yourself. Um, I think that obviously by not putting it back down, he wasn't being able to hit by the, uh, by the field blower. But as well as that, the choice band in this matchup is actually fairly important. He's able to take these knockouts. Joe opts not to move the Lele out of the active and move the Necrozma in. Um, I think here, Nilo, I'm really hoping to see this Alolan Executor GX because he could take a really clinch two prizes here on this setup Necrozma, taking it away from the board completely, putting him down to one prize, meaning all he has to do is knock out a Malamar. Well, this is the, 
one of the biggest things and one of the like the most important things in the entirety of the Zoro oh Dex very oh, nice no, very nice very big. the Latios comes down oh we see the Guzma as well he's gonna do a full 60 damage to the active and most probably knock out that bench Pokemon as well oh, oh no. 120 <laughs> damage from Nilo we forgot about that choice man we mentioned a huge swing turn taking that two prizes doing that and we finally have the list let's have a look <laughs> we finally have the list there are two dawn wings in joe's list so actually really weird not to see it hit the board yet well um, the problem is is that whilst it's very useful in this matchup in terms of being able to set things up and you know move things around it is dark week those are zero locks. those are free price cards so i think he's in a position of going i don't really ever want to have to bench it unless i know we can remove a zero from play um, so, but looking at Nilo's list, he's playing, I believe, it's the exact 60 uh, from Madison, uh, with the tech attackers of Katana, Mewtwo, and Latius. Um, so the Katana, very nice, discarding the special energies. Um, also the GX attack. The set doesn't really ever use its GX attack, but it has access to one. Um, to, you know, be able to take that last prize card will be very relevant here. Um, and but he's, oh, uh, yeah, but there, but there is actually, yeah, you're right. There is no uh, alone uh, executor GX in the list, so. As opposed to going for the snipe damage to the bench, he's actually gone, well, let's just try and make what is kind of an inconsistent deck, right? You have to play a very weird energy line. Let's not be too ambitious with how much we fit in here. Um, yeah, it does look like um, the one difference with Nilo's list as well, he is opting to play the two Ace Arola over just the one that was played in the Madison deck as well. So uh, we see the Guzma from Joe bringing yeah. up that Zoroark. I think he's trying to get the extra Psychic down on a Crosma, but that leaves it in the active, ready for Nilo to take the last two prizes. I think it might just be checkmate here. Um, obviously, a Marshadow being able to come down and perhaps uh, being able to use Prismatic Burst. Actually, this isn't checkmate. If he goes for the Marshadow here to take the KO, which is, I think, what he's going to be going for, um, Nilo's only actually playing two copies of Choice Band, and they've both now been field blowed. Which means that there's actually no way on that board currently to take a KO on this March Shadow. There's no choice band in that. In Guzma play. for Necrozma seems like the best play here. Yes. Most probably. Yeah, of course. Uh, from himself. Or alternatively, uh, Latios, of course, being able to uh, take it as well. He does only need one prize. So he can just sort his damage out. He can also drag up the Malamars as well. Just be able to tropical shake those. Uh, tropical. Yeah, yeah, tropical shake. shake. Yeah, yeah, tropical yeah. shake. Tropical shake those for knockout as well. Uh, the Marshadow does take the prize. I'm glad we've been able to see that come off. Uh, a very interesting tech um, coming off there. I do really like this. But Nilo looking into his hand. He doesn't have a Guzma right now. But, but the but unfortunate thing there was he had to copy the Hooper. The, the Hooper in the discard to, for 130. And not being able to attack next turn. So currently, this Marshadow can't do anything in the next turn. It should be okay if Joker has access to the Guzma. He can obviously just Guzma something out onto the bench, uh, you know, the Lele off the bench, and, and take it, the prize cards that way. But yeah, having to copy an attack, which means you can't attack next turn, isn't ideal. Isn't ideal, of course. Uh, we do see the Ultra Ball. I think Nilo's going to be hoping here for the Lele and the Guzma. Uh, does he have it? He's got the Mewtwo. Uh, another interesting tech uh, for this weekend. Another thing uh, from the Evolution set for a DCE. It does uh, 20 more damage as well for every energy attached to it. And of course, uh, the Mewtwo <laughs> comes down with that DCE, DCE, and we do see the knockout there yep. with the Psychic ability. Um, so, of course, as we were saying, uh, it does 20 base damage, DCE, and then of course 20 more for every energy attached to your opponent's Pokémon. Uh, that is very nasty for that Marshadow well, there. I think the issue with... So, one of the things that we can look at with this Marshadow, right, is it's Psychic Week. Now, with the kind of picked best deck in format being the uh, Buzzwall uh, lists, also having a psychic weakness, a lot of people are teching in psychic attackers, and we see even in a list that has a favourable prize trade in theory with this uh, against the <laughs> against Buzzwell, um, it's still including two extra psychic attackers, and including a low HP GX in 150 um, to deal with your Zoroarks. You're feeding things that are teching for Buzzwell, and that's more or less what happened there. The two KOs were actually. You know, what, the first time the Master Shadow went down was for uh, the Shrubble Shake. And then it was just a Mewtwo coming in and finishing it off. Like, you get into weird situations where to tech to improve one matchup, you 
kind of lose it to other people's techs. Of course, and I mean as well, not even a difficult thing for Nilo to pull off there, you know, just by having a DC in his deck that he naturally obviously plays because of Zoroark, just being able to just plunk that down on the bench, move it out of the active, in it goes, knock out that Marsh Shadow. Uh, the three energy cost for a lot of this deck's attack uh, does tend to be its weakness. Obviously, Prismatic Burst, three energy, Hyper um, um, Portal Strike, three energy. Um, obviously, you've got both of Dawnwing's attacks, three energy. So there is a common theme here to where Mewtwo actually becomes a very effective and efficient attacker in this matchup, being able to swing things back in Nilo's direction when things are in a pinch as well. Um, the one thing I'm really interested to see uh, here is obviously will Joe opt to go for a slightly different game plan this time. Uh, he went very early and very aggressively for the Necrozma GX's last time. Um, Although, would it be perhaps beneficial for him to go down a different route this time now that he actually knows what Nico's playing? Well, so this is the thing, is that in order to take that win, Nilo had to basically reveal all of his tech cards, all of the cards that he could have, you know, that Mewtwo coming down was nice, but he could have, perhaps there was a way to get to Aleo or a Guzma. If he had access to that, maybe he could have concealed the Mewtwo, because mm. in general, it's a very strong attacker against uh, the Psychic Manama decks. Like you said, there's a lot of high attack costs, and there's also a lot of psychic weakness. So it's actually a really efficient way of responding to tilt the price rate back in your favor. And it's kind of in an awkward situation of by having to reveal the Mewtwo, at least Joe knows maybe, maybe we try not to commit so much energy to a Marsh Shadow again. Yeah, I mean, uh, this time round, uh, perhaps the Marsh Shadow not being uh, the safest play for Joe. Um, Nilo not starting with anywhere near any better than a hand he started with last time. Again, we see the puzzles creeping in, the egg in hand as well. Nilo did put that Pokemon down and pick it back up, which... It's, a, it, it's basically fine in the case of... You can, until like you draw, you want to go to stuff, you can change things around. Uh, we do see uh, some, oh, the Marsh had actually prized this game. Uh, not a prize that Joe's going to take first either. They're dead in the middle there. So no matter what size he go, side he goes from, it's not going to be the first two he picks from, meaning that the Zoroark's actually become a lot more effective in the early game this time. Yeah, well, the other thing here is, you know, doesn't have the Zoroark immediately. Um, so he might, you know, he needs to probably use his support for the first turn to basically make his board. Um, but his prize cards are looking fairly good. Um, though, to be honest, that Marshall would be in there after the last game costing four prize cards could actually be a blessing in disguise for Joe. Uh, he may not know it until he takes a switch of his deck and goes, Ah, it's actually safe. It's out of the way. It's out of the way. <laughs> it's not going to be picked off very early. Uh, we do obviously, we see the very obvious, you know, the Bridget play for the Inkes and the, uh, the Hooper again. Uh, Hooper definitely proving its worth in the last matchup. Very close to being able to knock out that Executor on the bench. Um, I do think it was the correct play, using that mm -hmm. Hyperspace Punch, being able to snipe that 20 just to be able to finish it off. Unfortunately though, Nilo's higher Acer Roll account allowed it to uh, not come off very easily. Uh, we do see an Elixir come down straight away, straight onto the Hooper, and Joe off to a flying start so far. Yeah, this is looking a little bit better than just having Hooper in the active position going, uh, help, it's help stuck. please. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a lot smoother start. He also has a second elixir as well. This one doesn't hit. I think it's the first elixir he's missed. Um, but it's actually not so bad here to miss. Uh, he does have two psychic prized as well. That's yeah. one thing to bear in so mind. So he's playing at a total of 11, um, which is actually on the higher side, I, I believe, for some of these psychic mana lists because having tested it a little bit, one of the things you struggle with is actually getting energy into your discard pile to use your Malamas. Yeah, of course. I think uh, 11, uh, I was discussing this with Joe previously, he thinks 11 is the right count. It allows you to hit your elixirs a lot more consistently, allows you to get the energy in the discard a lot more consistently. And if it does both of those things, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day. Um, so we pass over to Nilo. Look at his hand, very similar to the last game. He's got some cards in there he doesn't really want to get rid of. We see the fire come down again and we see N. Uh, very sort of held in and held in place by what he actually could do that turn. Not a lot of options, so he does just shuffle in. We did see a Guzma in his hand as well. Unfortunately, no DCE just to be able to drag up maybe an Inke and just do the 30-30 there, being able to take a cheeky prize and slow down Giorgio's board state a little bit, stopping the Malamars and coming straight down. Yeah. But I think um, that was only really the correct play with a DCE in hand. Well, yeah, I think the big problem there for, for Nilo is he's actually given Joe basically a fresh hand. Joe actually had to play a lot of things. You know, he played two elixirs, he attached to turn, he bridgeted, he, lay, he ultra ball through a late, late. Like, he, he played a lot of his deck <laughs> and a lot of his hand cards down. So the fact that he's basically been given a free refresh is 
awkward, but yeah, Nilo's hand didn't really give him much choice. Not much options. Hopefully, though, we'll see uh, more cards come down. Uh, he's probably hoping to see some Zora was at least one here come down. I know that hand is one. rough. Uh, probably just as bad as the first one. Uh, we see Bridget, we see Kikui yeah. in there, we do see Kikui in there though. Um, very interesting, I didn't actually look at that on his list. Uh, the Kikui allowing uh, Executor actually able to knock out a Lele with yeah. that in the choice band. So, so it's very nice really, indeed. Really cute little tech of just going, right now I can just about reach. Um, we see the mysterious treasure and another mysterious treasure. <laughs> uh, Joe has gone, I'm going to go get some Alamars. So I Squid Boys, let's, let's do this properly. Uh, I think here as well, Mystery Treasure, very nice mm. uh, with the discard, being able to get that psychic energy nice and early. I don't think we saw another one hit the discard last turn, so of course, being able to Mystery Treasure that psychic in allows that Hooper now to get the last energy on it that it needs, and Joe can then attach somewhere else. Uh, however, uh, one thing we didn't mention, which is quite interesting, uh, ne Necrozma's asleep. Yeah, so <laughs> I actually don't know what the executive... Cute it's hypnosis. It's, it's, hypnosis. Just, uh, it's just a regular hypnosis. hypnosis. Uh, flip a coin, obviously. If heads, then your opponent's active is asleep. Joe not being able to hit the Guzman now, being, uh, having you Cynthia. So without a Dawn Wings on the bench, she's going to be asleep for this turn. Yeah, this is uh, one of those things where actually choosing your basic can be quite important, right? Um, you know, having access to putting things to sleep. You know, Inkay does the same. There are turns with uh, Necrozma where you're like, okay. I don't really have anything I want to do right now, so I'll just sleep the, the active and maybe buy a turn. Yeah, I mean, it's worked really well in ne Nilo's favour here. Obviously, Joe not being able to knock out that egg in the active, meaning that now he's able to get down on an executor this turn if he does perhaps draw into it somehow, uh, meaning that now his this almost acts as his second turn, as mm. now he's able to bridge it. He's not that far behind. He's still in this. Uh, he'll probably just opt to go for perhaps two Zorua and a... Uh, execute here or just the three Zorua altogether. I think he does want to go for more Zorua White to be able to claw himself back into this matchup as quickly as possible with his trades mm. on next turn. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. I think we're definitely going to see two Zorua. It'll be interesting to see what the third Pokemon here is though. Yeah, so he's just gone through quite carefully to consider his prizes because the, you know, last time we saw him use the two Ultra, uh, the two Professor's Letter to great effect. But actually he's gone actually this time we'll just go we'll go zero yeah we'll go zero I think I think this is a correct play to be honest with you uh, he knows that he's a turn behind although that hypnosis did sort of claw things a little bit he is slightly behind he wants to be able to draw into as many cards as possible in his next couple of turns using Zorowark and as we said last game Dormwings is on board this time meaning that there are two prizes up for grabs um, free prize essentially for that Zara White to be taking so he's going to be aiming for that most probably uh, I wonder if we will see just a basic energy come down anywhere else on the border if Nilo's just going to go for that hypnosis again and he and wakes up heads. oh wait oh he wakes up oh I thought he flipped to put it asleep don't worry I, thought, <laughs> I was like oh my oh my lord it's asleep Joe is going to be salty but it's fine <laughs> don't worry guys no so the the thing here is that he like Nilo will have tested this a lot and he will know that the, the Malamar decks struggle with Zorowak just as a general rule especially the psychic ones the psychic Zorowak is actually one of the you know the psychic Malamar has a really kind of shaky um, Zorowak matchup uh, it's not a tropical shaky, uh, tropical match. shaky yeah. Zoro Art matchup. Very nice, very nice. Uh, uh, we do just see a Guzma and a knockout on yeah. the Latios on Joe's side of things. Uh, we do see a Zoro Art come down and the first energy discarded into that discard pile. Uh, he does hit the DCE as well and the Acer Roller. Yeah. Uh, do we have enough basics in hand or anything to get them down for Zoro Art to start doing a little bit more damage here? Kikui to draw to that nice little Kikui card that we mentioned earlier on. And I think we see, yep, we do see the Executor here as well. And he the Grass Energies. Yeah, but uh, he's in a situation energy in the discards, yeah, though. Yeah, there's not an awful lot of ways in that hand either of discarding things. Like, the Zorok is very much the only option he has. Uh, there's no Ultra Ball. He'd, like, you know, he'd love an Ultra Ball to be able to go and grab some things. But it's just not there. Um, and obviously this turn, with the Dormings already in play, Joe's in a kind of nice position. So he's in a... This is a very slow start for Nilo this, in this game. Um, you know, Zorak GX. We've Strange decision here not to evolve the execute, though. I th so I think from his list, he's only playing uh, two. For the, for the executor, so I think he's just going, look, maybe we'll wait until it's actually live as an option. I think he's just conserving it, cause knowing full well that he doesn't have that many of them. Obviously, though, it is in his hand. It does boost 50 all the way up to 160. 
uh, meaning that Joe has to discard a lot of resources. Hopefully, though, he's banking on the fact that Joe most probably won't waste his time, just goes around up and execute. Uh, he's probably hoping for that. However, with Joe's board state so far, I don't think doing so would be such a problem. Zoro White not being able to knock out anything in one hit apart from the Dawn Wings on Joe's side of the board. Of course, the Malamars, but that's a different story altogether. Um, so not being able to take two prizes really at all off Zoro White, but Executor definitely being able to. So we saw a very quick Mystery Treasure thinning out cards that Joe doesn't want from the, for the matchup as well. Um, you know, discarding a couple more Psychic, uh, just because he's now able to just start using the Malamar just to keep everything powered up, and we'll just see what he opts to go for for his uh, secondary attacker. So he finds the Flowstone off the Sycamore, so he gets to swing for at least 130, um, uh, 110 into the Zoroark this turn, should he wish to. Uh, he's just considering, I think that was his manual attachment for the turn, was indeed. Obviously, we do have. Uh, we know there's at least two psychic in that disc up there. Uh, obviously, Necrozma being that manual attachment, so he might just be able to get it up uh, here. Though he does need four energy on it, as we keep mentioning. I don't think there are three psychic in the discard. There might there's be two, but he only has uh, two ways of accelerating. So, what he's, what I, I think is the smarter play, and is exactly what he's going for, is actually spread these energy out a little bit. Yeah, of course. Uh, Will he go here for the hyperspace or the portal strike? Yeah, so he goes to the portal strike, obviously being minus out by that uh, resistance that Zoroark has against the psychics, but that 130 being fairly relevant, obviously Dark Flash now can come in and finish off the game for mm -hmm. Joe on a Zoroark. Um, as we said, you do need four energy, but that allowing only three and being able to knock out Zoroark now. So Joe can be fairly happy with that. Nilo's still fairly behind in this matchup, so I still think Joe's in a comfortable position. Okay, so I think he just drew into Sycamore. Okay, so this turn instead we're just going to see him go, right, we'll deal with it this way. Um, one option he could have had there um, is to have traded first, because he's, he's got loads of energy in hand that he, I don't think he wants. Um, so he could have traded, hey, sorry, which traded, um, which is of actually a, a really nice bit of synergy in, the, in these decks of just getting to reuse abilities by just picking things up and putting things back down again. Uh, exactly, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah. Nilo not hitting what he wants to in this game. We've not actually seen him hit sort of any cards that he really wants at a certain time. I was that Aterola very nice to actually keep him in the game. We keep saying this. He's really digging his claws into this match. Uh, Joe is trying his very hardest to pull ahead, but Nilo is pulling him right back. Yeah. Pulling him right back into it with these um, these sort of stalling cards, allowing him to heal and stuff like that. He's really hoping now next turn to hit into his Zoroark, start getting a lot of trades off, getting all that energy in the discard and start doing some damage on his side of the board. Okay, so this turn, what we saw Joe do last time is he chose not to attach the extra energy from the discard. This means that in the uh, by letting the Hooper get knocked out, what he now has access to is uh, the vent space to go grab the Guzman, which is exactly what he's done. He then had the two attachments, the discard, and now he can take out that Zoroark. Of course. And because he knows that Nino is kind of not drawing great right now, actually the Zoroark is more or less in you know, Nilo's only strategy. Like it's, a, it's his main way of trying to dr get drawing out of this kind of funk that he's in. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, we do see, I think this is completely correct from Joe. Uh, we said previously, uh, before the stream even started, about these um, these Buzzwell decks perhaps going for the artillery, taking away the draw power, and that being the way to win. Joe can clearly see that Nilo's not having a fun time hitting the cards he wants so far. So you know what? I'm going to take away your Zara work. Not only am I going to take two prizes, but I'm going to slow you down completely as well. Absolutely. So we see Evo Soda, um, a card that actually didn't see an awful lot of play before Zara uh, became a big deal. Um, I think it was just Greninja, really. Yeah, more or less. So it's like now it's a case of, well, like, now I just go grab myself a, you know, a stage one or a stage two, you, know, you evolve one of your bench Pokemon, and it just makes things just a little bit easier. It basically means you wind up playing an extra copy, more or less, of every single Pokemon that evolves in your deck. Of course, I think a very efficient card in Zoroark, being able to draw into it quite easily as well. Only an item card, meaning you can use several of them in a turn as well. We've seen up to, up to you know, two or three being played in these Zoroark Lycanroc decks as mm -hmm. well, being able to get those down really quickly. Uh, we, we still don't see the second Zoroark. Nilo not having the best of times here. Can get a bit of damage down. Is that enough to take the knockout on Dawnwings here? With just 60, 90, yeah, it, yeah, is, it is, in fact, it is exactly enough damage. I think really the only clear play for Nilo to be able to start picking up prizes in this, um, he wants to hit that 
wants to hit really that puzzle of time in his prizes to get the Zoroak back out of there, but we know he's not drawing from that side. Um, tough position for him to be into. Um, well, the really important thing here is that this puts them, you know, back onto an even prize thing. It's whilst Nilo has had the slow start, it just shows that actually Joe's deck just is also kind of struggling to find ways of taking knockouts consistently. But what we do now have access to, and I think is what we're going to see, is I believe Joe took the Marshadow last turn. Yes. And because he used one of the attachments from Manama um, to the Lele, or his manual attachment to the to the Tapu Lele, he's now in a position to just put a couple of energy down. Which is exactly what we're going to see. He's just <laughs> going through going, okay, these are my choices. Um, I don't think he really wants to consider that NK too much as an actual decision. But, you know... I think he's got Rescue Stretcher. I think it's more of a decision to throw back into the deck. However, I think Joe, this point in the game, he's got three prizes left. He's got two clear prizes on the board. Three pre clear prizes on the board, should I say. Uh, thinning this deck as much as possible here, I think, is the best thing. Being able to hit exactly what he needs when he needs it. Uh, which he has done here, he's hit the Psychic Energy, allowing him to get as much down as possible this turn, as well as the two acceler uh, acceleration from the Psychic Recharge. That Malamar can, uh, that Marshadow now can come in and take a knockout on Zoroark, but the question still stands. Will Tropical Shape come back in and do its work? Yep. Well, I, so I don't see how many uh, energy, I think it's only like two or three. It's, he'd have to be very lucky when seeing exactly what he needs this turn. But he's also in a position where actually a DCE to the uh, to the Mewtwo again <laughs> leads us into exactly Does the same spot. The same spot. Uh, the Just slightly too late for Nilo, I do believe. Obviously, I'm looking at this Mars Shadow now, and all I can see is obviously this Mars Shadow is going to come in. We might see the Mewtwo come up, and then of course Joe only has one prize left to take, meaning that he can just come in with anything really. So what we saw Joe that. do here is a thing that you know a lot of the top players are very good good at doing is spotting. Okay, right. Yes, I'm KOing the Zorak, so the, the choice band doesn't matter. But he still played the field blower because he's like, look, I'm going to go down to one prize card. One prize card's not many if I get end. I do not want to see this field blower ever again. It needs to go away. Um, so instead of actually copying the Dawn Wings there, he opted to uh, copy the Necrozma GX because now he's discarded all of those energy. And with the Floatstone, he can just switch back out, put it on the other Necrozma, and he's fine. We do, we do in fact see... The Toys Bank come down on Executor. I do actually believe, Connor, that that is all the energy that he needs in there. I think it might well be. I do believe, I think there was a Psychic in that hand that got Sycamore away as well. Uh, I think that might be all of them. Nilo needs to be very careful here though. Joe, having used two Guzmas already this game, uh, obviously the rest are in the deck. He needs to hope that Joe doesn't have it. He's got a very clear way to get that last prize now. Nilo needs to be careful. And the Malamar comes up. The two, two energy, down, the Psychic, and do we have the Float Stone on the Guzma? We do, and that is 1-1. One, one. Uh, really exciting game there. Joe finally pulling back what he needs to from that Mars Shadow. The Mars Shadow coming in very effective. Hence the pin that I wore today. Yeah. I think it's going to be my favourite tech of the tournament. Uh, it's such a beautiful card as well, man. <laughs> I've got to mention it. I know it's not. I know it's not real content, but got to mention <laughs> it. I think it's one of my favourite looking cards of all time. But um, my shadow showing its uh, use here. Obviously, we first saw this um, with Sam Chen and Rahul Reddy mm -hmm. when they played the special in. I, I believe it was in Cancun in yeah, Mexico. It was, yeah. Um, and this Mars Shadow coming in handy. However, one thing that we do see that's different from Joe's list, um, from that list, is they did play the Pseudo Wudo, the robot Pseudo Wudo, meaning that Zoroark couldn't come back in afterwards and knock out Mars Shadow. Uh, thoughts on Joe not playing that? Well, so the, the problem with the Manamar lists is honestly your bench space is extremely limited. You wind up in situations where you need, by the end of the game, you really need two Manamar. You need. You're gonna have a lele. Unfortunately, like you're just gonna have one at some. There. You're, ju you're just gonna have one. <laughs> you're gonna want a dawn wings probably for most matchups, and then you're gonna have some form of attacker ideally. Um, Joe's actually playing a ranguru as a non-GX attacker and also to help him draw cards, but he hasn't needed it yet. Um, and then you're looking at like that's your ideal board state. Yeah. There's no space for the pseudo budo like. And it's a very passive way of dealing with the uh, Zoroark matchups because most Zoroark decks are playing things like Parallel City. Yeah. And when they Parallel City you and you get your bench knocked down to three, you're in a situation going, well, the pseudo Rudo's going. Well, the pseudo Rudo is gone before you even ask me. Like, I know that's a parallel in your hand. I'll just, it's gone. Like, you know, you're in a situation going, yeah, it's not 
really helping me or it keeps you slightly safer but you can just take KOs that's better yeah of course um, I know I know that it's probably not the best card to put in I was just wondering obviously the difference is there a uh, good thinking there from Sam Chen and Rahul obviously having a game plan um, but Nilo keeps getting really bad puzzles in his first hand luckily he had a mulligan there as well but there was a sycamore in that hand as well with two puzzle <laughs> he's going to start getting really annoyed in a minute if he keeps drawing into those uh, more discussion on the matchup though one question that I thought of in the middle of that match which is quite interesting Dawnwings we've not seen a GX being used by Joe yet nor Black Ray uh, nor uh, uh, Dawnwings however we do have access to two completely different ones here mm -hmm. we have a spread that can be done to all of the Zoroaks on three. the board yeah, well, oh, yeah, we have three. We can tap a cure as well, right? We can tap a cure as well. So we have a spread attack that can be done to Nilo's side of the board, taking 100 damage to each of those Zoroites, allowing those Necrozma to not have as much energy on them to be able to knock out, and of course, Dark Flash being able to do work with Choice Band as well. But also, the other main one, we do have um, the immunity attack as well as being able to do 180. Moon's Eclipse, yes. Moon's Eclipse, that's it. Moon's Eclipse, very cool yep. name. Yeah, uh, Moon's is. Eclipse being able to protect and do 180. In this matchup, what do you think is the better one that Joe wants to go for? So Obviously, we've not seen three Zoroark on the board yet. In this particular matchup, I actually think the best one is genuinely Tapu Cure. Because you're, you're against a Zoroark deck. Zoroark decks are known for two hit KOs. They're never threatening one hit case, unless it's on a Mars Shadow. Apparently. Of course, of course, right. apparently, apparently so. so. Okay, as, as we get underway, we see the Hooper uh, start again from Joe. Uh, this time with the Uranguru on bench. Um, and yeah, the the choice to be able to just go, right, we'll just nullify your damage. Yeah. Yes, okay, you've had to like swing for 120, 100, but now you just don't have that option. Of course, we... uh, Nilo, again, two choice band, a Zoroark, an Acer Roller, and two energy in his first hand. Not ideal once again. However, we do have an interesting thing here to where if he gets that Zoroark down, there is an energy to go straight in the discard. Hopefully he hits into the draw supporter then that will allow him to move forward in the game. But the really important thing to look at here is our prizes. So we've got four minutes to finish up this game. Yeah. And Joe has prized a Dawnwings, two Mystery Treasure, two Psychic Energy, and a Floatstone. Absolutely awful prizes. On yeah, well, so... The thing is, is that when you're at this point, like left, you're like, we've seen the first game went a good 20 minutes, the second game went a good 20 minutes. This game is most likely not going to end, so it's very much a just try and set up a board that you don't lose with. You know, you're unless you know, you want to be in a position where maybe if your opponent's particularly unlucky and you can't draw particularly, you know, they don't draw particularly well, you get away with it. But until then, you may as well just trust. This is probably going into time. Yeah, I think uh, here, with both of the decks sort of um, pushing as hard as they can to get the knockouts, obviously Nilo takes a bit of a while to get the energy mm -hmm. in there, uh, being able to start taking his knockouts. Joe needs to set up his Malamar in order to do so as well. So we have a case where both players can play the game, but it's very much a mid to late game. Yeah. Well, yeah, so this is actually this is one of the weirder matchups in this format because a lot of the decks that we will see throughout the day, if we see... There'd be Buzzwell on here at some point. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm right. absolutely that sure. That has like the most aggressive uh, early game of any deck, uh, with the amount of damage it puts out. Whereas these are kind of like, right, okay, we'll sacrifice the early game because that's fine. Because as soon as we hit our mid to late, we're we're winning. We're pretty, yeah, yeah, we're pretty good here. Um, Joe does opt to Sycamore. We see two Elixir in his hand. These, are, This is exactly what we were talking about, as in this game will go to a draw unless there's something really explosive yeah. here. Uh, Joe does get something explosive. He's just got to put it on a Lele, though. Um, obviously, Energy Drive opting to be quite an efficient attacker when there's lots of energy on board. However, Nilo's deck, unfortunately, does not play a lot of energy down. Did Nilo have a copy of Zorok GX in hand? He did. Okay, so... Because what Joe could be... Yeah, there's an option here to go, right, well, maybe we just set up with the fairly chunky looking Lele now to be able to go well if he puts any Zoroas down we can actually just take them out before take they ever set up of course of course um, two energy going on to the Lele um, I don't think the thing with this deck is obviously there are optimal and unoptimal things to attach the psychic energy to however it's never the worst decision in the world because there's always possibility to get them back exactly using so, in the late game so even if this Lele does get knocked out Three energy go in, which means there's three energy to come back out. Well, yeah, so uh, Buzzwell, the biggest thing in Buzzwell is actually your energy attachments. Yeah, you're, you get away with it a little bit because, I mean, you, you make your energy attachments when you need them, and then you just make some more later. You just put them, you know, oh, okay, the Lele's gone. I'll just put them back. It's fine. <laughs> I will put them somewhere else. Don't <laughs> worry about it. I was like, okay, clearly the Marshadow 
doesn't need these energies. <laughs> And we do see the trade for two Zoro actually, so the Dark hits That's the That's a really discard. nice uh, uh, trade. It's a nice trade, however, still no draw support for him to get anything. He's got the Ultra Ball there, but the only thing with the Ultra Ball, he wants to get these Alolan Executors down to start, obviously pushing Joe into a backwards foot. Joe didn't have the greatest start, obviously having to attach those to Lele, but does he go for the Execute or does he go for the Lele and the draw support? Yeah, so I think he's just trying to work this out because I think, really speaking, you know, with you know, these players are going to have a, a pretty good understanding of how long is left in the game, right? These players play a lot. Um, you know, Nilo runs leagues, so he's probably you'd very hope, familiar. You'd hope <laughs> that he's very familiar with this by now. So they're at the position now where, with not long left on the clock, you do Under need a minute to play, now. you know, fairly conservatively. You actually want to be in a position where you can never put down, you know, six prize cards for Joe to take. But then Joe's probably also going, well, let's not put down six prize cards that Nilo can take, because then we can't lose. And, exactly. you know, the, there are prizes on the board that actually uh, Joe can take, but it depends exactly when time is called. It looks like it's going to be most likely Very during soon. this turn. Yeah, it's going to be during Neil's turn. Obviously, he has opted to go for the draw supporter, meaning yeah. that Sycamore is going to allow him to have more cards to play with afterwards. Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be seeing the end of the end of the game should I say uh, without the three extra turns right now so that is officially out of time both players have just been notified of that and we start on zero on Nilo's side of the board yep. um, obviously there are yeah. and they've and the draw. Just gone, look there's no way we're taking any yeah. prize cards here 